this was the best the best next option. Sounds good. Okay. So um, on our end here at LiveWall is myself, Chris Armijo. Hi, I'm Sarah Kurz with LiveWall. And then we also have Olga. Olga, do you want to introduce yourself? She might be on mute. Olga Gonzalez from LiveWall Colorado is also on the line. So um, thanks everyone for attending. Like I said, we're going to go through the presentation really quickly and then open it up for questions. So first of all, welcome. Thank you for participating. Um, the things that we're going to go over today, if I could get the screen share to work here, maybe. Sorry, we're having some technology challenges here. <laughs> While we're doing that, why don't we have the folks on the line introduce themselves? So we have a few names that show up on the Zoom. Um, Erica, do you want to go first? Sure. My name is Erica Baruch, and I'm an independent consultant. I work um, on diversity, inclusion, and equity issues and work with nonprofits, religious organizations, government institutions, um, and some occasional foundation work. And I'm really excited to learn more about this proposal and what you guys are looking for. Thanks. Uh, Carla? Good morning, everyone. My name is Carla Messa. I um, am a consultant um, out of Denver, and I've been working for many years in the community, specifically around um, racial equity, um, diversity, inclusiveness for a number of um, organizations um, across sector. And I'm also the founder and president of um, Circle, an organization that um, works um, in youth uh, leadership, uh, specifically with social justice, as well as providing um, conferences in the Denver region um, for um, diversity inclusiveness. Thank you for um, allowing us to um, communicate via computers and um, technology. This is really helpful as I'm in New York today. <laughs> Great, thanks. Um, and Jill, am I saying that right? It's Angel, yeah, it's Angel, actually. Hi, good morning, my name is Angel Perez and I am an independent consultant um, with my own firm and I've been doing um, racial equity and um, inclusiveness consulting for about 10 years in the, um, well, actually in the Denver area and across the country. Um, I also do a lot of work in, in California and Texas. Um, I have been doing uh, work in the nonprofit sector for close to 25 years and I'm really excited to learn more about what the needs are um, and uh, if I'm a good match to be able to support the journey that you are embarking on. So thank you for um, allowing me to be part of this call. Thank you. And then there are a couple people whose names aren't associated. Who else do we have on? Anyone else? Okay. That might be it. Well, thanks everybody for joining today. And uh, now we have our technology working, so we're going to jump in and Chris is going to walk through just a few slides. Hi everyone again. Sorry about the technology hiccup there. Um, so I'm just going to walk through basically going through the RFP again, just so you guys get a sense, a little bit more context for how we put it together and kind of what we're looking for. So um, again, we're going to spend some time reviewing the goals of the RFP review the qualifications for the RFP, uh, talk a little bit more about the tasks and deliverables, um, talk a little bit about the logistics, and then answer questions from you all. So LiveWall Colorado is a state, statewide nonprofit organization committed to preventing and reducing the barriers to healthy eating and active living in Colorado um, in the communities that face inequity. And so by eliminating those health disparities and advancing health equity, LiveWall Colorado focuses its efforts on policy, environmental changes that move, remove barriers, and increase access to health. So that gives you a little bit of context about Live, who LiveWall Colorado is. I'm sure some of you all are familiar, but just in case you weren't, we wanted to make sure and share that. Um, so quickly, the goals and the context for the RFP. Um, currently, LiveWall is in the process of implementing a professional development series, so there's a lot of things happening starting 
next month around professional development around equity. Um, and the goal for the, the professional development series is increasing awareness of health equity and the implications for healthy eating and active living. So what you'll see a lot in this presentation is this acronym HIL, which means healthy eating and active living for those of you who are new to the board. So um, the first formal training will be on implicit bias. So this would be the, the organization's first big foray into the professional development series. There's some informal things happening and sort of smaller scale, um, somewhat tangentially, but important related activities. Um, but this will be the big, the first big um, all staff professional development engagement. So what, what are, what is LiveWell looking for in terms of team qualifications for this RFP? So again, looking for someone who has experience delivering, delivering implicit bias training, someone who's done this before, someone who has good ideas, someone who has some experience and also some experience around um, implicit bias self-assessment tools. Um, that's really important because what we're expecting is that that group will both um, administer and then help with the interpretation of that and um, integrate those tools into their training approach. Um, someone who also has some expertise on the science and research behind implicit bias. So, so um, we think that this is a really important part of the work. So someone who um, has some experience with training and maybe some experience on the ground with, with the science. Um, we also look for, looking for someone with experience training approaches using multimedia case studies or other approaches. So um, I'm, I'm sure all of, none of you do this, but not someone who will just talk out to the audience all day, but really have a really great mix of, of training approaches. And then someone who also has a familiarity with the field of healthy eating and active living. I think this is important because in the in the building and the, among the staff, there's a lot of great experts, and we want to make sure that um, that this isn't just an interesting conversation about implicit bias, but also it's really practical and hands-on, and it helps people apply what they learn through the training to that would be a really important part of the training. So, um, just to quickly go over the RFP tasks and deliverables. Um, uh, the first thing is really meeting with the select flat staff to develop the implicit bias training, um, developing and delivering an all-day all-staff training bias, uh, implicit bias training for about 20 staff members, um, recommending, administering, and assessing the results of self-assessment self tools, uh, providing an overview of the science and the research on implicit bias, um, linking implicit bias to the work of LiveWall Colorado, including how implicit bias can influence decision making and perception of the community that live well collaborates with to remove barriers to healthy eating and active living, um, creating a training that's interactive and plays a number of approaches and is consistent with adult learning degrees, uh, and then creating a post-training discussion guide for self-solicitation conversation. So um, one of the things that the staff has expressed that's really important is that there's a time after the training to do some debriefing discussion um, among themselves to talk about what did they learn. How they can apply it. So that's really important as well. Um, just real quickly, the RFP logistics. Um, the proposals are due on January 26th at 5 p.m. The budget for the meeting should not exceed $500. Um, that's the math. And all um, RFP should be sent to opportunities at livewellcolorado.org with the subjects implicit training and RFP response. So we just wanted to revisit those really quickly. Um, and I think we'll just open it up for questions. This is just a logistical question, um, Chris. Um, are you asking that the proposal um, be electronically delivered to LiveWell? Um, I, I don't think we have a strong preference one way or the other, but it'd probably be easier if it was delivered electronically since there are a few of us that will be reviewing it. Okay, thank you. Hi, this is Angel. And um, question that I have is, um, how far have um, you gotten into your journey around equity within the organization? Have you been doing this work? Do you have, um, let's say, a committee? Or is this kind of um, what what is going to kind of uh, start your intentional journey um, around equity. 
Yeah, it's a great question. In the last couple years, we've had um, an equity committee made up of staff members, um, and we've done a reading club for anyone on staff who wanted to, to participate in. We also did an all staff survey in December about where people are most um, wanting to learn around the issues of equity and where they see the biggest opportunities for their own growth um, and for the mm -hmm. organization. And so this is the beginning of the plan that, that came out of that survey. So um, much more intentional focus across the organization now to really say every member of the team is going to be involved in this. Um, and we're doing this based on what we've heard from the team members. Do you want to add anything? And Olga? good morning. This is Olga Gonzalez. I've, I've met all of you at some point in the community. I'm happy to see all of you or hear all of you. Um, in addition to what Sarah just shared, we have created a dedicated position to focus on equity, which is what I'm going to be doing. So I'm pretty excited. I know that there are very few organizations uh, across the state that have a person in place to help kind of guide and facilitate that process. So um, I will be working very closely um, with you to help kind of craft uh, what this training will look like to ensure that it does meet the needs of the staff. Because as you know, a lot of times we attend a training and it's really interesting and uh, you know we get back to our offices and there's no way to really apply it to our work. And so this is an opportunity to do something that's specifically crafted for us to help us with our, you know, efforts to eliminate barriers that, you know, marginalized communities face in terms of accessing health and healthy eating and all of those things. And so this is the first of a series of, of trainings that we will provide throughout the year. Um, we will have a sort of a prep session to kind of uh, lay the foundation for why we're learning about implicit bias, what that means, then you would come in, do your thing, and then we would have sort of a debrief as a staff to see what the takeaways were. We will also have uh, a training on um, race and racism um, this year. We will also have one on looking at the um, at structural poverty. Um, so it's really mm -hmm. very an approach to be very intentional in our work so that we can be more effective and more relevant and so we're very pleased that you all have expressed an interest we know that you're respected in your field and very well connected to the issues that we cover so we're looking forward to, to partnering with you to, to do this work and help live well as a whole be more effective and more relevant That's thank you awesome. thank you for this is Erica, and I'm glad you raised those two other trainings because one of my questions was, as you're looking at this implicit bias training, um, a lot of times when we think about implicit bias, we're thinking about bias based on race, ethnicity. Do you also want to consider and include bias based on socioeconomic status or even bias based on ability, disability status, things like that? How broad do you want the implicit bias training to go? I think it could cover all of those factors. I mean, they all are interconnected, as you know. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, just very, it's more of a, of a introductory kind of implicit bias, but really informing how that we don't know what we don't know and how is that impacting our work? How is that impacting our approach to policy making or to the messaging that comes from our office or in the way that we might interact with uh, low income communities, communities of color, people in rural areas. Um, so those are the key factors. We do know that issues of gender and orientation and disability all are interwoven. Um, and so feel free to add those components as well. But the key communities that we're looking at broadly are for people, people of color, and people in rural areas. Great, thank you. Other questions? Hi, hi all, this is Carla. Um, I, uh, my question is just really around, um, I guess, the direction for Live Well. Um, what is it that they're wanting to do um, as an organization 
um, I know that this, I understand this is like the first step in terms of getting the um, whole staff to be a part of something and experience together. Um, but in terms of your, your um, the work, where, where does LiveWell hope um, that this will take them? There you go. <laughs> um, this is Sarah. I'll take a stab at it. I'm sure Olga will add uh, other points. But um, our work, heal issues, healthy eating and active living issues and obesity disproportionately affects people in Colorado based on income and race and place. Um, and that is a strong motivator for why we want to make sure that our work is impacting those populations that are most likely to have systemic barriers that keep them from being able to access healthy food or opportunities to be physically active. Um, and we feel that if we as a staff do this professional development and better understand these issues as individuals, that that'll enhance the ability of our work to have the impact it needs to have. Um, we've gone through some strategic clarification work lately as an organization and that values that very clearly um, articulate the role that equity plays in our work, um, but also with the staff, we recognize that there's a lot we all need to learn in that area. Um, and so there's the work will be more effective if we're all better informed about these issues. So that's what we're hoping to get out of this. And, and a follow-up question. Can you share the, um, my understanding is there's about 20 staff, is that right? Yeah, we have 17 right now and uh, we'll be up to 22 in the next few months. And can you share the makeup of the um, staff? What do you mean? Demographic, with, uh, demographic information. Sure. Um, we, of the current staff, they're all on our website right now under the staff section. Um, okay. But we can put something together that we can send out afterwards. So in terms Thank of you. color, uh, in terms of folks of color on, on the team, do you, would you, can you oh, sure. share that or would you like us to just look on the website? So currently we have two people of color full time on staff and then we have a, an intern who works one day a week um, who's also from a community of color. And yeah. um, kind of like... Oh, so. <laughs> 15 women and uh, staff of different age ranges as well and different sexual orientations. Thank you for sharing that. Um, quick question to the follow-up question regarding socioeconomics and class and whatnot. Um, I'm just curious to know if, uh, you know, how does uh, the organization, like, where does, what is the, uh, weight, I guess, for lack of a better word, that race carries in regards to the lens that you are all utilizing and, and approaching with this work. So, um, you know, many organizations, for example, many of many organizations um, really attack race first in regards to equity because there's an understanding that um, the root of many other challenges and barriers are rooted in white supremacy and, and i know that's a trigger word for a lot of people but i'm just curious to know if those conversations have taken place or if the organization is really looking at it um from a place of um bringing all of those things in together if that makes sense i i would say historically livewell has been primarily driven by poverty and place in terms of how we prioritized our work and therefore we are trying to not just add race to the mix but really understand race in a deeper way because it's the area we haven't um, it hasn't driven our work in the same way that poverty in place has in the past and so i think it's i mean it was identified among the staff as the area where we have the most to learn so it is being added to the mix but in order for it to be sort of among those three, we need to learn most about it, I think. Olga, do you agree with that? Yeah, I would agree with that, and I agree with you, um, Angel. And I think that the staff is at 
you know, different places in terms of their understanding of race and white supremacy, how that lays the foundation for other forms of discrimination and oppression. So there are staff that are really eager and ready and, and get a lot of that, and there are staff that are, you know, very well intentioned but don't, you know, might you might say have kind of like let's just serve everyone. But they're understanding and they're aware that they need to delve deeper, and they're all ready to be moved in that direction. So there there hasn't been really much resistance. It's been more, as Sarah mentioned, we did the self assessment, and most people identified race as an issue that we needed to focus on and, and better dissect and learn about so that it could be more centered in all of the work that we do. So that's a good question. Perfect, thank you for sharing that. Another quick question, would you um, share that assessment with uh, the consultant that is hired just to give uh, kind of a um, backdrop of, of what was captured in that data? Would that be possible? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that would be part of the orientation with the consultant that's hired um, is to share right. that staff assessment that we've done and more detail about sort of our history of work in this area. Um, I think with the implicit bias training, this is really setting the groundwork for the work that we need to do um, moving forward. So really looking for someone who can help give us that foundation. Great, thank you. Um, one, one other quick question. You mentioned that you're currently a staff of 17 and you're going to be up to 22 within the next couple of months. Do you uh, have a sense, have you guys done um, work to, are you, is one of your goals to diversify your staff? And how will that play into those five new hires? Um, we have been very intentional, thanks in large part to Olga's work, in trying to diversify our hiring, not just with these next five staff, but um, the last few positions we've had open as well. Um, we would love uh, to find a consultant who can help us think through, though, if we do this implicit bias training as a whole team, um, certainly there will be team members, not just those five, but in the future, who come on after this training. And so um, how can we make sure that our staff onboarding process sort of right. brings people up to speed without the benefit of having gone through the training that, yeah. that we're going to undertake? Great. Um, just a, a quick question. Will um, any of the uh, like executive team, leadership team of the organization um, participate in the um, implicit bias uh, training or this, this um, information that you are in professional development? Are they going to be participating in this as well? Yeah, the intention is that this implicit bias training is for every single member of the staff. Okay. Um, so, and I'm a member of the executive team and helping at the early stage of the process. Um, there's certainly commitment from our CEO and from every level of the organization to make sure this happens. Um, it's a mandatory training for every member of the staff. And I would add that also, it's also part of their performance review every year. So because it's mandatory, it's a very clearly an expectation that it be part of their professional development commitment. So it's, uh, there's some accountability that's going to follow these trainings as well. I see. Awesome. And what about, what about the board um, members, Olga and Sarah, what, how does that play into their, um, you know, as the, the governance of the organization? Yeah, we, you know, our board is not the kind of board that is going to join us for an all day retreat three times a year to do this sort of training with us, but we are very cognizant of the fact that we don't want to get ahead of our board on this work because we need their buy-in in order to um, continue having it be the priority that the staff believes it is. So we haven't quite figured out what the process will look like for the year, but now that we have Olga um, formally in this role of Director of Equities, I think there's an opportunity for her to really 
be intentional about how the board is brought into these conversations throughout the year. And I'm, I'm also present in all the board meetings, and so I'll be doing uh, updates on our equity work to keep them informed about our progress and challenges along the way. I believe that they would also be invited to attend. Uh, we know that their time is limited and their volunteers and all of that, but they, in the past, uh, several of them have expressed an interest in our health equity work, including being sort of a liaison, a board liaison for our staff to help us with that work. I know that there's at least two board members who've um, expressed an interest last year. Um, so there's always opportunities as well as opportunities to increase the board's awareness about the same topics that we're covering. So they would also, um, part of the plan could also be to provide trainings for them um, as a board. And in the same way that we are working to diversify our staff, we're also working to diversify the board and have made progress in that area, but have more, more opportunity for sure. Thank you for that. Any other questions? Well, as, as Olga said, we really appreciate your interest and um, are excited to see the proposals that we get next week. Um, the email address that was on the RFP, if there are questions that come up after, um, feel free to shoot those to the email address. But otherwise, we look forward to receiving the proposals. And I will also add that if you have any questions after this session, like maybe over the weekend, you thought of a few other things you wanted to ask that you didn't, I'm also available to answer any further questions and um, help you think through this process. Great. Right. Thank you so much, Olga. Thank you all very much for hosting this session, too. Thank you, guys. Have a nice weekend. You too. You as well. Take care. Bye. Bye.